join kids hat family What happened? Why can't you sleep? I don't know. Can you please put me off to sleep by telling me a story? Sure, Tofu. I'll tell you one of my favorite story. The Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood lived in a hut near a forest with her mother. She always wore a beautiful red hood while going out. One day, she went to see her grandmother. On her way, she met a wolf. Huh? Hello, where are you going? I am going to see my granny. She lives behind that hill. The wolf got a wicked idea. <laughs> the wolf ran to Granny's house. her up and got into Granny's bed. After some time, Little Red Riding Hood reached the house. She saw the wolf lying in her Granny's bed. Oh Granny, what big eyes you have! So that I can see you better. Granny, what big ears you have! So that I can hear you better. Granny, what a big nose you have! So that I can smell you better. Oh Granny, what big teeth you have! So that I can eat you better! <laughs> oh my god! Help me! Help me! Nearby, a woodcutter was in the forest and he heard the scream. He ran to the house just to see the wolf attacking the little girl. He hit the wolf over the head and this made the wolf open his mouth and shout. The granny jumped out. The wolf <gasps> ran away and the little red riding hood never saw the wolf again. So Tofu, little red riding hood, was able to save herself and her old grandmother too. Good night, Tofu. Once upon a time, there lived a lonely couple who only wished to have a child. They lived in a little house all on their own. At the back of the house, there was a small little window from which a splendid garden could be seen. This garden was full of very beautiful flowers and herbs. No one dared to enter the garden as it belonged to a witch, 
named Dame Gothel. One day, the woman saw a plant called Rampion, which is used to make salads. Dear husband, I have a strong desire to have a salad made out of that plant. Oh, but that belongs to the wicked witch. Oh, please do something. I really want to eat those rampions. Okay, dear. I will try to get it for you. At midnight, the husband climbed the wall into the garden of the witch. and started taking some rampions. The man took the rampion and his wife made a salad out of it and ate it. But the very same night there was a knock on the door and the man knew something was wrong. How dare you human come into my garden and steal my rampions like a thief. You will suffer for it. Oh, please forgive me. My wife saw your rampions from the window and she wanted it so bad that I could not say no to her. Oh, if that's the truth, then I will let you have as many rampions as your wife wants, but only on one condition. What is that condition? You must give me the child which your wife will bring into this world. The man in his terror consented to everything. As time passed by, the couple gave birth to a beautiful little baby girl. But that very same night, the witch came to their door and took away the baby girl, leaving the poor parents in complete sorrow. You are such a beautiful looking girl. I will name you Rapunzel and take care of you. Ha 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 ha! The witch kept her locked in a tower with no doors and stairs, but just a small little window. As the time passed by, Rapunzel grew into a beautiful girl with very long golden locks. But her beauty went in vain because the cruel witch never allowed her to go anywhere. Sad Rapunzel just used to stand at the little window and sing sad songs. When the witch had to visit Rapunzel, she used to ask Rapunzel to let down her hair. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. One day, when Rapunzel was standing at the window singing sad songs, a very handsome prince was passing by. He stopped and looked here and there to see where this beautiful voice was coming from. Oh, what a beautiful song! Who is singing so beautifully? The prince noticed the beautiful voice coming from the tower. He wanted to climb the tower and looked for the door, but could not find one. He went back home in dismay. But Rapunzel's singing had touched his heart so much that every day he started going to the forest to listen to Rapunzel's song. One day, he was standing behind the tree when he saw the witch coming. 
and he heard what she said. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. Then Rapunzel let down her long beautiful hair. And the witch climbed up the tower. Oh, that's the way to climb up to the tower. I shall do the same. The next day, when it began to grow dark, he went to the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let your hair down to me. Immediately the hair fell down and the prince climbed up. Oh! Who are you? Oh Lord! You are the most beautiful maiden that I have ever seen in my life. I have lost my heart to you. Will you marry me? Will you be my wife and live with me in my kingdom? Oh, my prince, I wish that was possible. But the witch won't let me go out of this tower. And if she comes to know about you, she will kill you. I don't care. You are coming with me now. Come on, let's go. Oh, prince, I am ready to go away with you. But I do not know how to get down. If I let down my hair, then how will I get down? You are right. Mm. You have to go now. The witch will come soon. Yes. Don't worry, Rapunzel. I will think of something and come back tomorrow. That moment when the prince was climbing down the tower, the witch saw him. Oh! So he wants to take Rapunzel away. They both will have to pay for this. The witch climbed the tower after asking Rapunzel to let down her hair. You treacherous girl! How could you even think of betraying me? You shall pay for this. The witch took a big pair of scissors and chopped off her long beautiful tresses. Rapunzel was left all alone in the desert by the witch to live in grief and misery. Meanwhile, the prince returned the next evening to take Rapunzel away. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The wicked witch let down the long braid that she had chopped off from Rapunzel's hair and the prince climbed the tower without knowing what danger was awaiting him. When the prince was about to enter the window, the wicked witch chopped off the braid just to see the prince fall off the tower into the thorny bushes under the tower. The prince started bleeding from his eyes as the thorns blinded him completely. <laughs> the witch cast a spell on the prince and he wandered in woods around the world without any sight and survived in poor conditions. Meanwhile, the prince roamed about in misery for two years and finally he got to the desert where Rapunzel was left by the witch. La, la, la. He suddenly heard the beautiful sad voice of his beloved and started shouting in excitement. That voice! That voice! Is it you Rapunzel? Is it really you? He went towards it and when he approached, Rapunzel said, Oh Prince, you finally found me. I missed you so much. I am so happy to see you that I can't stop crying. Two of her tears fell on his eyes and they grew clear again. 
and he could see with them as before. I can see again. Oh, my sweet Rapunzel, what have they done to us? Let's go back to my kingdom. He took her to his kingdom. After a year, Rapunzel gave birth to a pretty little baby girl who looked just like her, and they lived happily ever after. Get up, Tofu, or you'll get late for school. Get up, Tofu. Hmm. Ha. Ah. Dia, you? Ha <laughs> ha. What happened? That. That was. Ha ha ha. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. That was me in your dream. Now get up and get ready. to do my homework dia Tofu it's dinner time and you haven't completed your homework yet I hope you know that your teacher will be really angry I will do it after this cartoon dia but please help me so that I can finish it fast You have been watching TV all day You should get up and do your homework first My hand has been hurting since morning. I'm giving it some rest. Also, dear sister, will you please get my bag and pencil box from the room? Excuses and more excuses. He should know his priorities right. Hmm. Did I forget it in school? What will I tell my teacher in school? You should be more responsible, Tofu. You are a big boy now. Anyway, complete the rest of your homework at least now and be more careful next time onwards. Tofu, let me tell you a story. In a land far away lived a hard-working and kind trader. Mostly he traded in salt. He also had a horse that was very lazy and always avoided work. The trader used him to carry sacks of salt from one town to the other.
here. Let me load these sacks up and let's go to the town across the river to sell this salt. I am so tired today. Why do I have to work every day? I wish I could sleep throughout the day. But no, I have to carry these loads of salt and move. Come on horse, start walking. Cross that bridge. Until then, I'll pack some food for myself. The horse was crossing the river. Suddenly, he slipped and fell into the water. As he was carrying sacks of salt on his back, the salt got wet and dissolved in the water. So when the horse got up, the sacks on his back were lighter. The horse thought to himself, Wow, this seems to be a good idea. Every time I dip in the river, the salt would dissolve and my burden could be less. I must try doing this more often. I hope Master is not watching. When the Master reached the town to sell the salt, it weighed just half of what he loaded. Thinking it might be his miscalculation, he sold whatever salt was left and returned home with his horse. The next morning, he again loaded his horse with the sacks of salt and started to pack his food. The horse yet again started walking before him and made it to the bridge. I must try the dipping trick again before master reaches here. The trader got really confused. As the sacks started weighing lesser every time. The horse purposely started slipping into the water every day. So that the sacks became lighter. One day, the trader followed the horse. and hid in the bushes. To his surprise, he noticed 
the horse's new trick. Oh, that's so cunning. I must teach this lazy horse a lesson soon. So the following day, instead of salt, the trader filled the sacks with cotton and tied him to the horse's back. Out of his new habit, the horse purposely fell into the river. Oh no, no! What is happening today? What is going wrong? How are these sacks getting heavier? Oh, my back hurts! What? This time, as the sacks were filled with cotton, it soaked water and became heavier. The horse dipped again and again in water, thinking to drain the salt off somehow, but all went in vain. He somehow managed to get up and cross the bridge. He sat on the ground and panted as the sacks had gotten really, really heavy. The trader laughed at him and said, Horse, I am your master. This is your work. I work very hard and worship my work. I don't make excuses or find tricks to fool others and avoid work. I must teach you to never repeat this and avoid your work. The horse learned his lesson and never tried to avoid his work again. What a wise trader! Right, Tofu? He taught the lazy horse a good lesson. Come, let me give you the big bitter medicine for your hand. But hey, I can see it's totally fine now. Maybe you have forgotten about the pain. Tia, I never had any pain. I just wanted to sit and watch cartoons. I was the lazy horse today. I am sorry, Tia. I am really worried about my teacher scolding me tomorrow. Here, take your books, Tofu. I also was the trader today. I just wanted you to learn a lesson. Now you should promise me that you will always do your work and yes, I will help you with your homework. Oh, thank you, Tia. Please, let's finish my homework quickly. I don't want to be lazy at all. I will always finish all my work before doing anything else. I promise you that. young man helping that man to cross the road? That's because he is blind and needs help to cross the road. Oh, how nice of that man to help him. Yes, it's always good to help others. Why, Tia? Come, Tofu, and I'll tell you a story. The Dove and the Ant One hot day, 
An ant was walking near a river bank. The poor ant lost its balance and fell inside the water. She screamed for help as the flow of the river was too strong. She was carried away. Someone please help me! Help me! Please! Someone help me! Help me please! Someone help me! Please help me! A dove was watching all this from a nearby tree. The ant was struggling for life in the water. The dove felt very sad for the little ant. Help And he decided to help her. Help me! Please help me! He said to the ant, Don't worry my friend, I will save you. The dove quickly plucked off a leaf and dropped it into the water near the struggling ant. The ant moved towards the leaf and climbed up there and the ant reached to the shore safely. The thankful ant said, I will always be grateful to you for saving my life. Few weeks later, the ant saw a bad hunter with a gun. The hunter was targeting at the dove sitting on the tree. Guessing what he was about to do, the ant quickly bit him on the heel. Ouch! You pathetic ant! What have you done? The ant walked away happily as she was able to help the dove in return. So Tofu, just the way Dove's good deed helped him to get out of danger by the ant, similarly, every good deed we do for others will surely come back to us. Hmm, I will always help the needy. That's like a good boy, Tofu. We have come too far from our camp. When will we go back? I am feeling hungry. It will take some time, Tofu. Those berries look yum. I think I can treat on them for the time being. Tofu, stop! Do you even know what those berries are about? They look yum to me. That is all I know. But they can be poisonous. You are in the middle of a jungle. Poisonous? Come, let me tell you a story on our way back to the camp. On a long sunny day, there was a fox walking in a desert. Hungry and thirsty, all that he could see was miles of sand and barren rocks. Oh, it is so hot. I need water badly. He kept on walking and suddenly he saw a well. Thank God. I finally found a well. Now I will no longer be thirsty. He ran and ran in great excitement. 
The moment he leaped on the well's wall to check water, he lost his balance and fell in the well. Help! Help! Somebody, please help me! This well is really deep. How would I ever get out of this place? Nearby, a goat was passing the well. When she heard the fox, she went to peep over the well. Hey, fox! What are you doing inside this well? Oh, goat! Isn't it too hot outside? I just came into this well to cool myself off. Why don't you also hop in and enjoy this cool and refreshing water? Not even thinking for a second, the goat jumped into the well. Hey fox! You were right! This water is actually very refreshing. I could spend all my day out here. After some time, the goat stops and asks the fox, Wait a second! How in the world will we manage to get out of this well? Oh, it's going to be simple. If you stand on your two feet and push me up, I can manage to reach to the top of the well and then pop out of the well. The goat, once again, without thinking twice, does as the fox said. Hey fox! What about me? How would I get out? Ha 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 ha! I guess you have to think about it on your own. B but I helped you getting out of the well. Who asked you to? You should have thought about the consequences before taking any actions. So one should look before one leaps. Yeah, Tofu, always. Because you never know what danger you might get into. And those wild berries, they might have been harmful for you. Uh, yeah, Tia. One should always check before taking a step further. Look, there is our camp and I can already smell the dinner is ready. Yay! Let's go! What are you doing, Tofu? I'm trying to water the plants, but this hose is broken. Come, let me tell you a short story. The Clever Crow The Clever Crow One hot day, a thirsty crow flew all over the fields looking for water.
For a long time, he could not find any water. Suddenly, he saw a water jug below the tree. He flew straight down to see if there was any water inside. Yes, he could see some water inside the jug. The crow tried to push his head into the jug. Sadly, he found that the neck of the jug was too narrow. What should I do? I am really thirsty. How do I drink water? Then he tried to push the jug to tilt for the water to flow out, but the jug was too heavy. He looked around and saw some pebbles. He suddenly had a good idea. He started picking up the pebbles one by one, dropping each into the jug. As more and more pebbles filled the jug, the water level kept rising. Soon, it was high enough for the crow to drink. His plan had worked. So, like the clever crow, was able to find a solution to the problem by thinking and working hard. Would you be able to find one to this too? For your favorite rhymes, stories, and more, join Kids Hat Family. Subscribe here.